When you check in the dictionary for the definition of success, you will find that success means for you to achieve your aims, for you to achieve your goals, or for you to turn out as expected. Okay, so we can say that success is for you to achieve your intentions. Success is the achievement of goals. Without goals, you don't succeed. So, I always say that trying to succeed without having goals is like playing a game of soccer or football without a goal post. It won't matter the direction in which you kick the ball, you will never score. And if you don't score, you won't experience that unique feeling, that exhilaration, or the fulfillment of having accomplished a definite task. Because we're wired for it. Most people can't define it. But when you get it, you recognize it. You know it. You get what we call rest. There is a knowing on the inside of you that you got it. Okay? So achieve. Success is the achievement of goals, but I wish it was that simple. I believed that for quite a while until the day I was reading Luke chapter 12. And Jesus told the story from verse 15 about a particular man. Jesus said, beware of covetousness, for a man's life does not consist only of the abundance of the things he possesses. And he told the story of the man who set goals for himself. He was a farmer. He planted crops. His farm brought forth in abundance to the extent that he was saying to himself, what am I going to do now? He said, I'm going to pull down my storehouses, my warehouses. I'm going to build bigger ones. He said, then I will store all my crops. Then I will say to my soul, relax, eat, drink, and be merry. You know, it was like he was celebrating the fact that he had arrived. He had made it. Jesus said, and God spoke from heaven and said, you are a fool. Tonight your soul will be required of you. Then who will own all those things that you spent your life acquiring? I see that in our days, our world is more money driven than destiny driven. The one thing you need to bear in mind is this, that there is one goal you did not set for yourself. And it was the goal of being born as a human being. Someone made the decision that you should be born. Someone designed your life. Somebody decided that you should exist as a human being and not as a lizard. Someone designed your life. Now, the person who created and designed your life did it for a purpose, had some goals in mind for designing your life the way he designed it. So, it's not enough for you to set goals for yourself and to achieve those goals. Really. Real success for you, true success, ultimate success for you is to discover God's goals for your life and to achieve them. When you read the parables or the teachings of Christ in the Bible, he talked a lot about heaven and hell or about after life or life after this. And the one thing he made clear was that someday every single one of us will account for the life that we're living now. And he said, God will tell some people you did well. God will tell some other people you didn't do well. In fact, from the way Jesus described it, some of the people that God will disqualify will be church people. Who will take God up and say, but we did this on your behalf. We did that in your name. We did that. And they will say, excuse me, I have nothing to do with you. So you wonder why there will be so much uh, disqualification at the end of the day. It's because many people would have set goals for themselves that God never set. The starting point always you must remember is your relationship with God. Your destiny is not to be designed by you, it's to be discovered by you. It's been designed already. Do you have a relationship with God? Is for you to discover God's goals for your life and for you to achieve them. 
the one thing you should be happy about is that your destiny was designed and finished before your life began. Your destiny was designed and finished before your life began. You know, in Revelation 13 and verse 8, the Bible describes Jesus Christ as the lamb that was slain, not a little over 2,000 years ago like we say, but from the foundation of the world. That's what that verse says, Revelation 13 verse 8. The lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. The life that Jesus would live, everything he would do, the price he would pay for mankind, all that was finished, in fact, before Adam was created. Your life was designed and finished before Adam was created. It's good for you to know that. Jeremiah chapter 1, you read verses 4 and 5. God said to Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. He said, and before you came out of your mother's womb, he said, I sanctified you. To sanctify is to separate for a special cause. I sanctified you. He said, and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Before you were formed in your mother's womb. That's what I'm talking about. Your destiny was designed. It was even finished before your life began. In Hebrews chapter 4, let me read verses 1 to 3 of Hebrews chapter 4. I like uh, the way the Bible describes it here. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. It says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, that is God's rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who had it. Verse 3. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said. So I saw in my rapt, they shall not enter my rest. This is the catch. Although the works were what? Finished. From when? That's it. Everything about your life was finished from the foundation of the world. So when you bring yourself into alignment with God's plans, with God's purposes for your life, you enter your rest. Why? Put yourself in the place where God has made all the provision and where the power of God will aid you to fulfill God's plans and purposes for your life. You enter your rest. It's a rest that you enter by faith. You accept that God has a plan for your life. You accept that your small brain can never invent a plan. <laughs>